Let's look at this first example. For this overhanging beam with the shown loadings and the cross-sectional area is also shown, we need to determine the maximum bending stress at point B and also the absolute maximum bending stress in this beam. So for the first part, to determine the maximum bending stress at point B, we need to determine the internal bending moment at point B. And for the second part, remember, bending moment is a function of position along this beam. Therefore, we need to first determine where the absolute maximum bending moment occurs, and then we can use that to determine the absolute maximum bending stress in the beam. So with no surprise, we start again with the free body diagram, set up our coordinate system, mark our unknown reactions, and then try to solve for all of them. You might argue, maybe we only need to solve for FA, and then we can still solve this problem. That is actually true. However, just to be comprehensive, let's solve all three of them. So. Resultant force along the x direction equals to zero, therefore Cx is zero. And then if we summarize the moment about point C, we can solve for Fa. And then resultant force along the y direction equals to zero, therefore force Cy can be solved from here. Then we mark the support reactions on this free body diagram, and this completes the free body diagram. And in order to solve for the maximum bending stress at point B, we need to determine the internal bending moment at point B, and for that, again, we're going to use method of section. We section this beam at point B, exposing the internal shear force VB and internal bending moment MB. I don't need to draw the internal normal force because as we determined earlier, there is no force along the x direction. And in this case, we don't need to solve for the shear force VB, so we only need to set up the resultant moment equation about point B where we section this member, and then from here we can solve for MB. So now we're going to apply the flexure formula to determine the maximum normal stress at this given cross-sectional area at point B. And for that, obviously, we need to do some geometric analysis to determine the moment of inertia of an area of this cross-sectional area. To do that, we need to first locate the centroid of this cross-sectional area. And since this is a composite area and there is no horizontal axis of symmetry, we need to use this formula to determine the centroid location. So to do that, we need to first define our component areas, area 1 and 2, find their respective area and the total area of this cross-section, and we also need a reference location. So according to this reference line, the centroid location of component area 1 is y tutor 1 equals to 2.25 inch, and the centroid position of component area 2 is 1 inch. Therefore, we can substitute in them into this equation and solve for the centroid location of this composite area. Now we have determined the position of the centroidal axis, the z-axis of this entire cross-sectional area, which is at a location 1.75 inch above our reference line. And now we're ready to find the moment of inertia of this cross-section about the z-axis, which equals to the sum of the moment of inertia of the two component areas about the same z-axis. And for that, we apply the parallel axis theorem. So this term right here is the moment of inertia of component area 1 about the z-axis. And it equ equals to this term, which is the moment of inertia of this component area 1 about its own centroidal axis. And for a rectangle, this equals to 1 over 12 times b times h to the third power, plus this term right here, which is a1, the, its area, plus d1 squared. d1 is the perpendicular distance from the centroidal axis of 
component area one to the centroidal axis of this entire composite area, which is the z-axis. So we substitute in all the quantities, and we can find the moment of inertia of this entire cross-section about the z-axis. In the unit of length to the fourth power, therefore, in our case here, the unit is inch to the fourth power. And since we determined the internal bending moment at point B earlier, and now we have the moment of inertia, therefore, we can apply the flexure formula and solve for the maximum bending stress at point B. And we can also represent the linear distribution of normal stress this way. Notice here, the direction of the stress has to agree with the direction of our bending moment. For the second part, the absolute maximum bending stress in the beam, we need to first sketch the shear and bending moment diagrams so that we can visualize where the absolute maximum bending moment occurs. If you still recall, the graphical method to sketch the shear force and bending moment diagram, the load intensity function is the slope of the shear force function, and the shear force function is the slope of the bending moment function. A concentrated force corresponds to a jump in the shear force diagram, and an external couple moment corresponds to a jump in the bending moment diagram. So based on those rules, we can start with sketching the shear force diagram, concentrated force, constant negative load intensity, zero load intensity, concentrated force again, zero load intensity, and with the last concentrated force, the shear diagram returns to zero. And as you can see here, shear force equals to zero, which corresponds to a possible either maximum or minimum bending moment. And we sketch the bending moment diagram following the same rules. And you can see here, we indeed have a maximum bending moment that we need to determine. And we can determine that through a quick method of section analysis at location 3.94 feet. And that's our maximum bending moment in this beam. Again, the moment of inertia of the cross-section about the z-axis, the centroidal axis. Flexure formula again so we can determine the absolute maximum normal stress. And the linear stress distribution can be represented like this. And then completes our problem. Let's quickly look at this example. We have a cantilever beam with the shown loadings and cross-section. We need to determine the absolute maximum bending stress in the beam. And from the previous example, we already know that we need to sketch the bending moment diagram so that we can determine where the absolute maximum bending moment occurs. And then from the flexure formula, we can determine the absolute maximum bending stress. Again, we begin with the free body diagram mark the unknown support reactions. There's no force along the horizontal direction. Resultant force along the y direction equals to zero. We can solve for the force along the y direction. Resultant moment about point A equals to zero. We can solve for the support couple moment at point A. We start with sketching the shear force diagram. Concentrated force no load intensity, constant negative load intensity, no load intensity, concentrated force, no load intensity. Based on this, we can sketch the bending moment diagram following the same rules. As you can see, the absolute maximum bending moment is 8.1 kilonewton meter. And we need to do a geometric analysis of this cross-sectional area, which is symmetrical. Therefore, we can easily determine that the centroid position is right here in the middle, and this is our centroidal z-axis. 
and this is again an, a composite area. We have three component areas. Notice that one and the two are symmetrical about the z-axis, and the perpendicular distance from their respective centroidal axis to the z-axis are the same, d1 and d2. And the moment of inertia about the z-axis equals to the sum of the three moments of inertia of the respective component areas about the z-axis. We apply the parallel axis theorem for area 1 and 2. Therefore, we can find the total moment of inertia about the z-axis in the unit of meter to the fourth power. So this is our absolute maximum bending moment. This is our moment of inertia of this cross-section about the centroidal z-axis. This is a C, which is the maximum perpendicular distance of the edge of this member towards its centroidal axis. So we can apply the flexure fo formula now, substitute in all the quantities, and determine the absolute maximum bending stress. We can also represent the stress linear distribution on the cross-section. Here, remember from our bending moment diagram earlier, this bending moment is negative, which means that the bending is downwards. Therefore, when we draw the stress distribution, as you can see, above the centroidal axis, the stress is in tensile direction, and below the centroidal axis, the stress is in compressive direction. And here is when we have the absolute maximum bending stress, and this completes this problem.